Joining us now, please welcome Natalie Kuldell. When I started at MIT in 2003, there were a number of really exciting things being built there. One of them was this building. It is called the Stata Center. It's also called Building 32, uh, because at MIT we really <laughs> like numbers. Um, it was designed by the architect Frank Gehry, who is kind of known for this mixed up, falling down building style. Uh, but he is also known for his appearance on The Simpsons, where he was shown crumpling up a piece of paper and throwing it to the ground to come up with his design. You know, maybe, right? <laughs> um, but uh, the reason I mentioned this building at the start of my talk is because it captures a lot of what I have learned teaching biological engineering at MIT. Uh, for starters, one of the things I learned is that this building wasn't built from the rocks and the pieces of metal that Frank Gehry found lying around Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, for this kind of creative and innovative structure uh, to be built and designed, the rocks had to be sculpted into bricks and the metal had to be pressed into sheets. And because the rocks had been standardized and because the metal had been refined, they could be uh, used more easily and more creatively. Now, in biological engineering, we're not building with rocks and metal. We are building with DNA and with cells. But let's think for just a minute what it would mean if we could combine DNA and cells more easily and more creatively. Maybe we could come up with a, a living therapeutic that could be perfectly targeted for each and every patient. Or maybe we could come up with a living sensor that could detect and then destroy some environmental pollutant. Or maybe we could come up with this. This is a bacteria that can serve as a pixel in a living photograph. This living photo of the Stata Center was built with snippets of DNA that had been standardized and a cellular chassis that had been refined and that enabled them to be combined so creatively. Uh, it's one of the early examples of biological engineering and is really emblematic of a subfield called synthetic biology. And now, really, you might be thinking, that's kind of cool, it's kind of interesting, but it is not the same thing as curing a disease or cleaning up the environment. And if you said that to me, I would completely agree with you. But Here's the thing, aren't you just a little bit curious about how this was built? And wouldn't it be kind of fun to try it, right? Here are some of the images that my MIT undergraduates developed using this living photography system. But really, why should they have all the fun, right? What would you build with a living photograph? What would you take a photo of? Maybe a diving board, or maybe a kayak, or maybe a poop emoji, right? Um, what if I said that I actually could teach everyone here how to do this? In uh, 2011, I started a nonprofit educational foundation called BioBuilder, and we really capitalize on that curiosity about how to build living systems and also people's desire to do good in the world. Uh, because curiosity is really at the very heart of science, and uh, using science to meet society's needs, uh, well, that's engineering. And so uh, we take engineering principles to combine little snippets of standardized DNA, and we teach people how to build novel living systems. We worked with award-winning teachers to make sure that this content could fit into their high school classrooms and laboratories. And we offer our curriculum freely and openly on our website, and it's also collected into a textbook that's been published by O'Reilly Media. We have hands-on laboratory kits so that teachers and students can try this together 
in their uh, classrooms and laboratories uh, throughout the United States and around the world. And we're very proud of the content, uh, but we do also appreciate that for many teachers, they meet some resistance bringing new curriculum into their classrooms. And so we started the BioBuilder Club so that teams of teachers and students can work together after school to learn how to engineer biology. We also run an apprenticeship program so that uh, these talented young students can find summer work in the life science industry. And then, uh, although you can learn all the material from the web, we also, uh, one more photo, there we go, whoops. We also run uh, hands-on workshops uh, for nearly 100 educators a year so that they can learn to bring this content more confidently into their classrooms and teach other teachers uh, throughout the United States. Um, and as I say, we're excited and proud of all this work, um, but I do have to be very honest with you and say that engineering biology is still really hard to do. It takes some specialized laboratory equipment, it takes some expertise, uh, and it takes a lot of trial and error to properly program a cell with DNA. But as we heard earlier, just because it's hard doesn't mean that it's not worth doing. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it won't get easier. Uh, this builder was not born knowing how to build this data center, but he learned. This is a photo I took of some of my students in front of this data center. They had come from Wuhan University in China, and when they landed, they did not know how to engineer biology, but after two weeks with biobuilders, they had learned. And I'm excited to say that they are among the thousands of middle school and high school and college students and their teachers who will work with the biobuilder content this upcoming year. There's one more thought that I want to share. Uh, and that is to say that when, when Frank Gehry designed the Stata Center, he didn't really just crumple up a piece of paper, right? He worked with the tools of his profession, like this computer-aided design platform. For us to really engineer biology, we have to work more harmoniously with the tools of our teaching profession. It is the teachers who day in and day out, are changing our future. This photo I took in front of the Stata Center, it is of the first cohort of teachers we ever trained as biobuilders. And they have gone on to run biobuilder clubs, to uh, be authors, published authors on bioengineering journal articles, and to lead professional development workshops around the world. Uh, in biological engineering, we are taking what nature has given us and we are crafting it to meet society's needs. And I know that it is not easy to do, but I also know that the skills to try are completely teachable. The skills to try are teachable. And uh, as you've seen, advanced science and engineering is possible at an early age. And with BioBuilder, we bring education and biological engineering together for greater future impact. And I hope everyone here feels welcome to join us in changing the world. Thank you. <laughs>